Hello, everyone. I am Juliana Alexander, co-founder and executive director of Plumgate Miami. And as you know, Plumgate Miami is a nonprofit organization that supports the independent voices, so independent media makers of Florida, um, and also uh, independent producers that come to Florida to shoot. Um, and this is why we're having this workshop, um, is how to um, basically create outside of the system, um, the established system in regional environments and how maybe the recent pandemic and then also just changes in technology and the democratization are making the independent producers that are working outside of the system more valuable and we might be the ones that are saving entertainment. Tongue in cheek, but we're gonna talk about this. But um, I wanted to thank the Miami Film Festival once again for asking me to create a masterclass for their 2021 edition. It's always an honor. Uh, also, congratulations on putting on another successful edition. It's tough to uh, create a festival, well, it's tough to run a festival, it's tough to have a festival every year, but it's especially tough right now. Uh, but um, so congratulations. Festivals are incredible for us filmmakers because they allow us to connect to our audiences in, in an immediate way, uh, allow us to connect to our peers and to um, open opportunities for us for success. So uh, we do hope this year it's hybrid. We do hope to be all in person soon, sooner than later. Uh, but before I begin our conversation, um, I would like to um, interrupt. I want to introduce you to Omo Figueredo, who is one of the industry's most talented indie producers who works across the world and is um, unique in a way that he has transcended a genre. So he started in documentaries and then he's now producing fiction films as well and commercials outside of the system. And he has two projects at the Miami Film Festival. So before I ask my first question, I would like for us to see the two trailers of the two films. And one is a documentary, it's a six-part series that will screen on a Sunday at 2 p.m. Um, at the Silver Spot Cinema called The Miramar Murders. And the other one is a feature uh, fiction film, which is called One Careful Owner. And it's going to screen today and tomorrow um, at the Silver Spot and virtually. Uh, so make sure you check them out, they're fantastic. Um, but so without further ado, let's, let's play the trailers and then we'll uh, dive right in. Whoever's gonna watch this, should this man be institutionalized or what? <laughs> Casimir Sukorowski was found murdered in his Miramar home along with two other people. Marie Rogers of Hollywood and Sharon Anderson of Miami. I've seen that tape and you can tell exactly when a life is lost. Bam. 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 Pablo Ibar. Pablo Ibar. Pablo Ibar. Sobrino del boxeador Urtain. Está acusado de tres asesinatos, pero él asegura que es inocente. I know the truth that he definitely didn't do this. He was with me. There's no way that Pablo could have done that. Alguien tenía que pagar a ese crimen. Estoy preso por un crimen que no hice. El Tribunal Supremo de Florida ha anulado la sentencia de muerte dictada contra el español Pablo Ibar. That's never happened for us. We've never covered a trial that we already covered 20 years ago. La repetición del juicio de Pablo tiene un presupuesto de 1.300.000 dólares. Es dinero, dinero y más dinero. Es mi deber, como padre, cueste lo que cueste, haya que hacer lo que haya que hacer. Pablo is innocent. He's waited long years, wrongfully convicted of a crime he didn't commit. He's not a victim, he's a murderer. Quieren soltar a Pablo, hagan la prueba de ADN, la finger print, ahí tienen a tu padre. Pablo es inocente completamente. Han encontrado ADN positivo de Pablo, pero ojo, parcial. So many years that they've said themselves there's no DNA matching there's and now all of a sudden they come with this. Tenemos todas las razones para suponer que ese ADN sea una contaminación. The police collected evidence from Pablo's home. That contamination could have happened there. The only question here is is that Pablo? Did you answer that under oath? I guess I answered it under oath. You came into a courtroom, raised your right hand, swore to the oath, looked at a jury and lied to them. 
Yes, I did. And what are you saying? You can't do testimony every time? Now take him out of the courtroom. This is unfair. Mr. Lord. We're the fucking lawyers. This is our case. And I like Pablo, but you know, I'm not having somebody tell me what to do. I've been doing this forever. You let me finish my fucking sentence. Start saying to yourself, I'm innocent. That's not me. I want Pablo to go home to his family. I want the torture for the families of the victims to end. It ends if he's found not guilty. It ends for everybody. One of the jurors called Judge Bailey and told him he regrets the decision that they made. Holy shit. This case has been something made for motion pictures, except that these are real people. Señora Palacios, Oscar Ramos, de Inmobiliaria del Sur. He hecho salto, buena orientación. Convendrá conmigo que por este precio no va a encontrar nada mejor. Lo sé, es un precio especial teniendo en cuenta. Teniendo en cuenta el inconveniente. La posesión del inmueble no se perfeccionará hasta llegado el momento de la muerte de la parte vendedora. Servidora. ¿Verdad te has comprado un piso esperando que la dueña se muera? ¿Hay algo de malo en eso? No, en esperar no, en desearlo sí. Mi abuelo vivió hasta los 87. Pero seguro que su abuelo no fumaba como un carretero, no bebía como un cosaco y no tenía dos bypass en el corazón. No bebo alcohol, gracias. Yo también me estoy quitando. ¿Tienes marihuana en mi terraza? El IBI del piso. Lo deberías pagar tú que vives en él. La Navidad es época de regalón. Tú vendes seguro de vida, ¿no te hacen descuento? ¿Tú de qué vas criticando todo lo que hago, dejo de hacer? Yo voy con la verdad por delante. Seguro que ya le has puesto fecha a mi entierro. Dos años. Si volviera a nacer, no cometería los mismos errores, que han sido muchos. Pero también me he reído. No sé de qué, pero siempre he elegido reírme. A los que os quedáis, que aprovechéis el tiempo. Y que os espero, a todos. Hija, no sé, le podría haber puesto un poco más de emoción a la cosa, ¿no? ¿Y tú qué pasa? ¿Que nunca has tenido miedo a estar sola? Feliz Navidad, Sara. Mierda de Navidad. Somos Pelma y Luis. Decide lo que quiere y vea por ello. Estás como una cabra. Estoy viva. Joder, cómo pega esto. Uh, uh. Es que me está dando, ¿eh? Por eso. Me está dando. Hi. Okay, so thank you. We're back. Um, and Almo, um, as I said, I'm so inspired by you and um, as a producer and now director as well and your career. And I've seen it um, exponentially speed up in the last five years since we've known each other. And as we were talking before, you were already successful to begin with. Um, so tell us a bit about your journey. How did you start? You started your production company in Seville in, uh, in your 20s. And how are we here right now with just two incredible films in two different genres, um, which is not very doesn't happen very often in in, in the independent production companies. Hi, Liliana. Well, first of all, very <laughs> nice to see here. you again. It's That's so well. I mean, it's so unfortunate we cannot be there uh, together again, talking about uh, cinema and series and everything. But at least we have this system that allows us to be close although we are very far away because i'm in spain it's uh, 10 p.m at night here in spain but still we can talk so i'm, I'm very happy to to join uh, this master class so as you were saying i mean i'm, I'm based in sevilla in a uh, in a small town well it's not that small one million one million citizen here in, in in sevilla in the south of spain and i was born here i was raised here And since the beginning, I decided I, I really wanted to, to work in cinema. My parents are both doctors, so they really has nothing to do with, have nothing to do with, with cinema. But in my house, I've been raised, uh, surrounded with uh, books, music, and cinema. And I really wanted to work on, on, on cinema. So I decided when I was 18, I decided to, to, to start um, at the University of uh, Communication, Mass Media Communication. Um, so I started studying there. And as soon as I, as I started, I realized that was too the, the, theoric, the, too theoric. You know, there's, there was a lot of theory 
and not very practical. So I, I really need something to do. Um, um, so the good thing of the university is that I met my partner, Manuela Chimartin. Uh, we were there, we were talking about many things. Um, we were talking about short films, documentaries, features. So at the end, we decided to, to just to fund a company called La Claqueta. Um, it was founded 19 years ago uh, in March 2002. So next year, we will be uh, 20 years old with this company. At the beginning, we decided just to focus on public on commercials, you know, just working for others, which was a very good, very good way of uh, um, uh, learning. Because at the end, it was like, the good thing with commercials is that it's something that at the beginning is like very small, you can, it's really tangible, you know, you know, that you receive some money, you have a deadline. And the only thing you need is to do it on budget, on time, on budget, and of course, on a good quality. And this is a very good way to start growing your company, know exactly uh, what to do, what not to do, and also to, to meet with people, to start creating a network of contacts, and also to receive incomes, which is good for the bank to see that you can generate uh, profits and, and that you are reliable. After five years in my company, we decided to start working with documentaries. For us, documentary has been always very important. At the beginning, we started just with very local documentaries, very local, like stories that were um, that could be interesting for people in my region uh, here in Andalusia. And that was a very good way to start because it, it was easy to sell rights to our own TV stations. Here in Spain, we have a system of um, uh, public support. We can, uh, we can raise money through uh, some public uh, institutions. So we started producing documentaries that were interesting for our local region. And after that, after doing several documentaries, five years later, when we were 10, we decided to do our first feature documentary. Um, that was a hit here in Spain. We were nominated for, to the Spanish Academy Awards. We sold the rights to Arte. Arte is a very, very good and, 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 and well-known European broadcaster to Canal Plus in, in Spain and France. And um, it was for us like um, a turning point in our company. Since then, we started producing documentary series uh, for big networks like uh, History Channel, Discovery Channel, and then we realized it was time for us to move to fiction, but not forgetting about documentary. And that's what we are doing now. We are producing fiction. We produce uh, around two to three features per year. This year, it's going to be, I mean, it's, it's probably the, the most busy year for us. We, we are, we're going to have five features in a row. Uh, plus one uh, animation um, uh, feature. So we are dealing with a lot of things. Uh, so I think this is probably the only good thing that we have got from the pandemic during the confinement. All of us have been developing a lot. And the good news is that now we've been able to, to film and that's how we started. So, I mean, it's been uh, uh, 19 years of uh, filming, and I mean, we are really happy. We are really, really happy that we were able to tell so many stories. Absolutely. And then, um, since we're talking about the fact that you have uh, fiction and you have documentaries, do you have different scenes that handle the two sides? And I, I believe you still do commercials as well. Do you have kind of like almost like three arms that handle it, or is it the same? Yeah, well, that you rotate around it. Yeah, we have we have like three uh, um, junior producers. Two of them are dealing with fiction. Then mm -hmm. we have another one dealing with um, uh, documentaries, mm -hmm. and then we have a fourth one which is dealing just with commercials. But now my company has split it, and now we have a different company that it's taking care of the commercials. So La Claqueta is no longer working with commercials. Um, so we have three unit producers, then we have, we are two senior producers and, 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 and we also have like the accountant department, the financial, uh, department, and that's, that's the company. 
Right. And um, and you said something really important that if there are any local filmmakers listening, or, and I'm sure there are, um, that it's such a good start to focus in your local stories in your local stations while you're honing your skills and cutting your teeth. Um, and, and that makes you also u- unique as a producer because you're creating content that's outside of just everybody else that can have access to these stories um, and then kind of extend naturally to feature films and, and traveling across the globe. Because I know that the feature film that put you on the map is born in Syria, correct? Yeah. Which, yes, was, was a conflict. But you already were so prepared with crew and knowledge and skills to kind of take on that challenge. Well, the, the, the real thing is that, okay, in our, in our business, in our sector, it's very important to learn by studying, but the most important thing is by, by learn by doing. So the, we, we tell stories, and the first stories we told were just wedding videos. I mean, we started doing wedding videos, and this is something that's funny because it, it, it really helped us out getting a huge network of contacts. Um, I mean, I think when we founded a company, we created this business plan. It was a very simple business plan, but now looking with perspective, I think it was really wise because we were only 21 years old and we decided, okay, let's create this company with just, uh, without any money. We just had two computers uh, from our own house houses. And then we had like two cameras and we decided, okay, let's just, join those two computers, those two cameras, let's join together, this, let's create this company um, and, and let's just look for clients, potential clients from Monday to Friday and during the weekends, let's do wedding videos. And the good thing with the wedding videos is that we were young, fresh and innovative and, and we started doing a lot of wedding videos. So we, we started earning a lot of money, which was great. Uh, but instead of just uh, burning all those dollars or euros in discos, we, we just reinvested in, in, in equipment, um, which was really good because we, we got better cameras. We, we were able to uh, uh, hire um, one person with us. And, and through the weddings, because the good thing is that on a wedding, you are with the camera and, 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 and everyone is looking to you because you are the one who can just give them voice in the wedding. You met like between 100 to 500 people. You met a lot of people. So we, we, we started meeting a lot of people during those wedding. And, and, and between those guys, the good thing is that we met one very important person for us, which was a guy who was um, um, managing director of Armani, Spain, and later he became managing director of uh, Sony Ericsson. So we started doing a lot of videos, corporate videos to Armani and Sony Ericsson, thanks to the wedding videos. And so what I mean, and I think this is a very, this is a very important thing to young people is that if you like audiovisual, if you like to tell stories, don't focus in cinema. Cinema is just maybe a later step. You have to start by doing anything. I mean, if, if, if you want a camera, just work on a Burger King or McDonald's and earn that money and invest in your own camera, then you will be able to do your own short film and don't get crazy trying to do a short film with an Alexa. Still, you can do it with a very cheap, handi- cheap uh, handicap. You can do it and if it's good and the way to do it better is by doing a lot of short films, you will improve again and again and again. And then of course, just create your own um, network of contacts. That's why I get, I guess Film Game Miami is so important in Miami because at the end you also allow people to meet or to, to meet other people. So, I mean, at the end, we started doing wedding videos, then commercials, then corporate videos, then local documentaries, then global documentaries, then series and then fiction. and it's it's just like a stir. It's just one step after another. That's it. Well, I was hoping that you're going to tell the story because I know that a lot of the our filmmakers, emerging filmmakers, that one day uh, when they're still in school and they're graduating, that's the kind of journey that they have to take as well. 
um, especially in the city without incentives. So I wanted them to, to see that it's possible and to also know that there's a long game to play. So the patience is important. The planning is important. The business planning. Yes. Patient is really important. I mean, for us in our business plan, and this is something that it was very important, we decided not to, sh not to do any short film before we were five years old with our company. As you can imagine, for us, two young people who wanted to tell stories like documentaries, short films, or features, it was really, it was hard to decide not to do anything until we had enough experience, enough money, enough resources, enough um, confidence in ourselves and the bank's confidence in, in, uh, in, in, in us. So, I mean, we started with the company in the year 2002 and my first feature fiction, feature fiction was, I think I, I've done it in 2016. So it was a long journey to do that. But the good thing is that I was doing so many things at this, uh, uh, that I was no, I, 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 I didn't need it. I, I didn't have the need to, to go and to, to just to, to rush, to, 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 to go to, too fast. I mean, it's important to be patient and 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 decide. You know, you, you can feel it if you are ready or not. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And you said something um, which is always the burning question: um, funding. <laughs> um, where are you? What are your funding sources? Where are you finding the money for your projects? Uh, at the well, beginning, that... wedding videos, but now um, that you've learned through this this entire experience of twenty years. Uh, what is the advice that you will give to okay here there's this, there's something important that there's a big difference between european of course european yeah. system and and the anglo-saxon anglo-saxon system and in the us is totally different but of course at the beginning we we wedding videos help us getting commercials and later those commercials all those profits we just reinvest part of those profits to pay for our development. And this is probably the most important thing. Development is the key. Mm -hmm. You never have, I mean, you can have a great idea, but ideas are nothing. Ideas are, I mean, everyone can have an idea. The most important thing is not the idea, it's the way you're going to execute, you know, the execution, how you, how, your point of view on that idea, how you're uh, going to, um, show it to the audience how you're gonna uh, perform it how you're gonna deliver to the channel to the broadcaster so this is probably the most important thing so there are many ways i mean if if you uh, come from a, a wealthy family and you have enough money then you can do it but invest in development if you don't have that money you can find somebody who can invest in your in in, in your um, um, in your products just by creating a business plan. Um, the best way to do it is not to offer them just one product, but a slate of products. Maybe you can offer them five, five stories. And you say, okay, if you just give me $50,000, uh, I'm, I'm going to use $10,000 on each one of those five features. And I promise you that if I get just, if I, um, able to to finance and and to produce just one of them, you're gonna receive back those fifty thousand dollars plus a good benefit, a good profit. There are many ways, but you have to. Of course, one important thing here is that I studied media, but later on I studied um, 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 a master, a, a post, uh, how you call it, a degree, a post post graduation degree on on business on audiovisual business this is important because at the end we deal with numbers with figures and, and this is a business so it's very important to talk the same way they talk so it can be a bank it can be an investor it can be a business angel it can be your and that those business angels can be your family but you need to show them that you know exactly what you want to do that your idea plus the execution, it's reliable and that there's um, um, a good percentage of, um, how you say, a good uh, possibility 
to to be able to do it and 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 to be and to and to do it well and to get some profits so it's i mean i know that also in the states you have some development um uh, called development subsidies and you can ask for grants and uh, it's always difficult but there are always ways to do it yeah no that's interesting and i really like that the the, the idea of the five slates or the ten slates where you are um, distributing the risk for an investor um, and for yourself as well. You're always having, and then you always have other ideas in the in, kind of in the back burner. So that's a that's a really good point to take from there. Um, so when it comes to the uh, Miramar murders, for example, I know for a fact of, I I was your local producer for this. Um, you decided to take a risk. And and put a lot of your own money at the beginning, knowing that you're going to sell it at the end, which is one way to do business, right? Tell me, are there other ways to kind of create a project? So, do you? Well, that's usually the way to do it. Is like for my idea, invest some at the beginning and then, or yes. Well, I mean, we, we are living on a golden age of audiovisual. I mean, there are so many platforms and opportunities and it, it's amazing. At the, at the same time, it's very competitive. So it's not easy, of course. With the Miramar murders, the problem, and you know that the, the, the main problem was that we had a great story, we have a great access, we have great characters. But at the same time, we had a problem, which was that we didn't know exactly when was this story uh we didn't know the, the end the deadline for for the story because we were just filming a trial and with the justice you didn't never know exactly when it's going to be finished so the problem is that when when, when you don't know exactly when when it's going to be the finish of the, the the end of the story you cannot talk to a platform and 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 confirm them agree uh, you know a, a deadline and they know they 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 really need to know when you're going to deliver the tapes mm -hmm. so that was too complicated so that's why no platform wanted to commit with us because it was okay so this gonna this can be just one year two years three years four years five years at the end it was like six years you know mm -hmm. that but you know times change change and, and and no one is going to commit on something that it, it lasts too long so that's why for us the only way to do this was just by investing our own money it was there, there was no other way to do it here in spain we have some fiscal incentives uh tax incentives so we knew that by spending money on the cities we will be able to raise some money just you know by at the end at the very end but it was a huge risk risk for us what we would do it is we put all the profits from different productions and instead of reinvesting it you know just in, instead of taking it for us and for the you know and and to buy a house we decided to reinvest on this series we were so committed to the characters to the story uh, and we were so confident that it was a mm, need a story to tell that that this is the way we did it would i do it again <sighs> i don't know probably not uh and and now uh, now after doing this and focusing on um and and, and setting myself on stories that has already finished stories that i can provide a deadline uh, a delivery date to the platforms and of course, the easier way to do it is through offering the platform, uh, for, you know, in advance. At the same time, if you do that, you know that you lose the control. If you just give it to a platform, you know that at the end you're gonna be a creator that working on the hands on of a platform that will decide the, the, the editorial content, the way that the, the story have to be told, and with the medium of murders, the good thing is that it it was the financial risk was huge. It was really it was painful for us, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if you if you go to the creative side, it was amazing to work with all this creative uh, freedom to to know that no one was deciding for you for you. 
it was you deciding every single thing. You wanted to tell the story in three episodes, you can do it in three episodes. You want three, six episodes, six episodes. You want 55 minutes instead of 44, you can do it. Yeah. Everything was decided by us. And that's something that is gold. It's, it's, it's amazing. So, of course, there are many ways to do this. And this is the way we do it. But you make a really great point. If you, um, it's, you have to decide if you want to be in control. And if that's the case, you have to risk at the beginning. But if you don't want to risk that much, then you kind of have to give up control through some of the production, which is yeah. like very yeah. good. And also the, the, the problem, the, the, the whole problem with them, if you decide to invest in yourself and, and, and you invest a lot of money, the problem is that you cannot, you cannot stop doing that. I mean, um, the problem with this production was that in the middle, after three years producing by ourselves, we knew the story was not finished. We knew that we were far away from the starting point and uh, we have spent so much money that we needed to finish. But at the same time, we needed to finish with an international quality. And that international quality forced you to spend even more money. So it was complicated because we know, okay, I have creative freedom to decide whatever I know, whatever I want. But if you want later to sell it to a platform, you know you have to fulfill some standards. And those standards means a lot of money. So it's, it, was, it was really painful. But, I mean, we enjoy the process. We really enjoyed the process of doing what we wanted to do. What I, uh, what I really admired about you when we were working together is that you, maybe like me or every other indie producer, you were kind of, to get the best, you were always pushing the boundaries kind of remember we were only allowed one camera in, in the um originally it was one camera and by by florida law you can you only are allowed one camera as a journalist and it's just that one camera and then we have to share with all the other news outlets and then it became two cameras and three cameras and, and at the end we had the entire place wired so we have this incredible footage from every direction, but we had to figure out how we do this without being too disruptive. And then everybody was mic. So it was just an incredible access of uh, all of these characters that were going on in the, in the, and it and shows in the documentary because you're in the courtroom, you have one camera and it's just facing a judge. And that's so much of the project. Then you would, you would, yeah. it would not be interesting to watch. The, the, the good thing with documentaries is that a no can be just provisional. And it was provisional, no. I mean, it was no at the beginning, but we knew that uh, push, pushing and, and working, and for us, I mean, probably the most important movement if you te in, in terms of a strategy was to hire someone local. I mean, and, 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 and having you there, it was important because for us, we didn't want to be perceived as a Spanish team coming to the US. We wanted to be perceived as somebody uh, a, a whole production with a, with um, uh, with a team working in the U.S. and 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 and, and a long and a term and, and, a, and, and a team working forever, you know, during the whole period. And as soon as we started going to trials, and you were going to the, all the hearings, all those motions, all those interviews, then they realized, well, maybe these guys are not journalists. Maybe these guys are really saying uh, what they are saying to us, it's, it's true. They are not lying. They, they are here because they want to tell the story on a good way. And the only, go the only way to do good, uh, things uh, on a good way is by just filming, 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 interviewing, and also giving voice to everyone, which you know, it was probably one of the most um, important problems we were facing because it's, of course, it's sensitive when you are dealing with uh, um, uh, something like this uh, documentary, you know, the nature of the topic, it was sensitive. So working for a long period, and again, this is the good thing of working for six years is that you can get and you can, you, yeah, you can manage to get better things. 
Very true. Um, and then uh, I guess since we're already on this trajectory, let's talk about how you are now handling the distribution of the project. Um, uh, it's it went to it premiered the San Sebastian Film Festival. What happened there? How did you know? Um, how how are you working with this very important creatures called sales agents? And I know that you really believe in that, and yeah. you were you even recommend for emerging filmmakers with short films to get to know sales agents and work with them. So it's not to wait till later in your career. So if you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, I mean, I'm a producer. I'm not a distributor. I mean, I'm, I'm a commercial myself, of course, because I have to, to sell rights to TV stations, uh, but I always do that only in my country. When I, when I, have to sell the rights outside my country i put my, i put my product in the hands of others people who just go to every single market and just represents my product but at the same time that they sell the right they sell the rights not only from my product but from from different products which is good because you know tvs and platforms are lazy and executives, they don't want to buy just one thing. I mean, if you have, uh, you know, the, the more, the, a, a big success in Sundance, of course, they will just target you and they will try to buy your film or your series. But when they are dealing just with regular products, what they want is to buy, you know, different tapes. They want to buy 10 hours or 20 hours or 100 hours. Can they buy 100 hours from me? No, because I only have six. But if you put your series in hands of a sales agent and that sales agent represents 10 different series, they can do a package. And that package helps you um, getting into different markets. Of course, so I can tell you, yeah, sales are your sales agent uh, crucial uh, very important but of course it's much more important to pick a very good sales agent so it's very important if you're gonna put your product in the hands of somebody uh, just do some research uh, and it's easy you can take a look at your on, on their portfolio and if they are representing somebody you know just call that guy ask them if they are reliable if they pay because it's something that sometimes uh, because they are going to take, they, they are going to be the ones selling to Netflix. They're going to get the money from Netflix and then they will pay you. Um, it can be 70, 75% of, uh, of, of that money. It can be 50, it can be, you know, depending on, on, on the agreement, but it's important to have somebody who is reliable. Um, so now, yeah, I mean, we've been six years working by ourselves investing investing and investing and we were lucky lucky enough to be uh, picked up by san sebastian film festival which is an a-list film festival most important film festival in spain one of the most important film, uh, film festivals in the world and and they they pick up the um, series and it was very good because that helped out help us getting the visibility we needed to, to target different platforms. And from that point, sales agent uh, uh, talked to different platforms. And at the end, HBO was the one, HBO Europe and HBO Nordic was the one just buying the, the, the rights. And now all sales agent, which is Filmax, Spanish sales agents, they are the ones dealing with the, with the series and they are just selling the rights territory by territory. Um, and then, uh, actually, before I, I don't want to forget asking to ask this question because I we've never talked about this specific answer, but we've talked a lot about uh, bit currency and, and investment in bit currency. And now there is maybe in the last three years there has been a conversation around fundraising through um, through bit currency and media, so creating specific funds or bitcoins that is that are tied to film productions. Um, and I, I would love to know your thoughts about it because you're a successful bit currency investor. So are you also interested in that or do you think it's a fad when it comes to fundraising through it? Well, I mean, I think that they're, they're going to be 
pretty good chances to get funding from 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 that side. I have to tell you that I'm a private investor on on cryptocurrencies. I'm not uh, investing through my company, but I know companies that are doing that. Um, I've been I've been offered lately, and and I know there is a lot of uh, new um, fundraising websites that are working through these Ethereum platforms. Um, I think the blockchain will help us a lot. Probably it's too early, and of course anyone who wants to do this has to take care of course because you know the problem with the with the cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies is that still we are it's really i don't know how you say in english volatile that you know the fluctuation is huge so it's i think there's a good opportunity i haven't started with my firms but of course it's i think it's something to take good look and and probably i will start soon Okay, interesting. And then, um, how was as somebody that come that is a producer that's based out of a civil in Spain, um, but now works across the borders? And I know that in Europe, there's a reason why to um, to work in, let's say, Romania, one of the kind of cheaper countries to produce in. But then also coming to Florida, I was always interested to ask you what would have made your Florida filming experience better. Because uh, I think as a state, we're trying to, outside of the fact that we don't have incentives and it's a really painful point for us and people keep complaining and it's still not happening. Uh, what else could, would have been helpful to you as a, as, as a producer that, you know, it's really not your base, um, but you're coming to a different state? Uh, I, I think at the end, the whole thing, it's reduced to the tax incentives because I mean, you know, Diliana, that for us at the beginning, it was too difficult to find the proper people. At the end, we really find pro the proper people, talking about sound, camera. But, you know, the main problem is it's that in Miami, many people work on sports or, or soap operas or news. But at the end, when you're dealing with cinema or fiction, uh, you want to do, you want to work with people who, which are like used to to work on 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 that side and i know many people that were working in fiction move out to different regions uh, different um, states because of the tax incentives the lack of tax incentives so at the end i think it's again reduced to the tax incentives the tax incentives are important because not only get companies from different countries and different states going to Miami, but also allows you to create a better um, um, what you say, network of, of infra yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I think that's the only thing. I think that's the only thing, but I think the, the possibilities are huge. And in Miami, and you have an amazing weather, you have amazing locations, and I think it's it's. I mean, for us, being coming from Spain, you are uh, the 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 salaries are higher than in Spain, but are not that crazy. So I think it's 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 affordable. So mm -hmm. having just tax incentives would be huge. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, when uh, when. The pandemic started you probably you had to close down for a bit correct how do you feel the pandemic no. how did you deal with these challenges what did you use your time <laughs> for while you were closed how are you on set now because you're filming at the moment a feature film so what are the kind of the, the elements that you've implemented in order for it to be successful how has it changed and how do you think it's going to change us for the future productions Kind of, yeah. yeah, I mean, well, I mean, we were really lucky last year because we were not filming. In fact, I finished uh, the last interview on all documentary, the, uh, the series, the Miramar Murders. It was, I think it was the 28th of February last year. So after that, I came back to Spain and 10 days later, we started this 
full confinement of three months and we were not able to go out of our homes for, during three months. We were forced to stay at home. And well, the good thing is that we were just in post-production and lucky as today you can work and you can edit and you can do the whole post-production uh, online. So that was also good because we had one feature film one feature documentary and uh, one documentary series and all three products were in in post-production so we didn't stop at all um for me being a director on the series as well as a producer it was also good because i could just center and focus myself into the series and that was really good and i had a feature film um I planned to, we were going to have a feature film in August, September last year. We canceled that, we postponed it to this year because it was a film that was a very, a very indie film. It was, uh, I think the budget is lower than 1 million euros, around $1.2 million. And it, it, I was dealing with young actors and with elder people. So it, I was scared of putting them together so I decided to postpone it. So the first COVID shooting, I started uh, just three weeks ago. Um, and this year we're gonna be, we're gonna have five shootings in a row, including the, the one I, I postponed it from last year. So how are we doing? Well, first of all, just um, we are allocating a good money on contingency uh, because there's no insurance here covering COVID, there's no one covering it. So it, it has to be us taking the risk. So for us, first thing is we implemented a lot of different clauses on the on the contracts with actors, with the team saying that, hey, if we, ha if we have to postpone, you have to be able to, you know, to, to, to stay for, you, we can postpone for 15 days, which is somehow 10 to 15 days is the period that usually you have to, to postpone something, but you have to be with us. I mean, you cannot go abroad. You cannot go to a, a different, uh, we will pay for that, but you cannot go abroad. Um, so we have implemented a lot of different clauses on the contracts. There's no insurance, but we have allocated a lot of money on contingency. We have allocated also a lot of uh, money on uh, COVID expenses. So we are doing PCR tests to everyone getting into the into the film at least two PCRs before starting the filming and then two antigen tests every week to everyone in the set doesn't mind if it's uh, extra or if it if we are talking about actors or uh, the staff hydrogel to everyone FFP2 face max ob Everyone, I mean, and that's mandatory. Everyone in set has to use FFP2. Um, and then each one has like a color. Um, we have created like different circles. So only few people can access and get in close to the actors, which at the end, they are the most valuable, 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 um, the most important people because they are, they, they, their exposition to the to the um, coronavirus is bigger and higher than ours because they are without face uh, face mask. So only director, DOP, and some people from uh, the lip teams can go and talk to them. So uh, at the end, it's uh, it's uh, we are spending a lot of money and and then. You have to cross fingers and be lucky not to suffer any any bad contagions, bad infections. So we'll see. Do you think this is going to be? And I know that we have about uh, eleven minutes left, so I, I I know that there are questions that are coming in, so I'll, I'll open it up soon. Um, but do you think that uh, the what what do you think the lasting effect will be of the pandemic experience? Well, I mean, pro I mean, probably um, during the next few years, we, I know, I, I think we're going to use FFP2 face masks. I think um, I, probably good things at the end because we will we will um, 
for example, something that we have done now is that here in Spain, we um, stop at one hour to, to, to have meal in every single shooting. Now we are doing running buffet and we, we are doing like pack, packet lunch to everyone. So there's no, no one sitting in a table face to face, which can spread the virus. Um, so I think we're going to have slight changes, but not big changes. And also in terms of production or distribution, I think we've, real, we've seen how uh, that everyone has been in their own houses consuming CDs and features. So at the end for or the visual market has been even better. So I don't know if this is going to be a bubble. Maybe it is. Maybe in a few near next years we will see what happens. But I do believe that for during, uh, at least next year, for during the next five years, we're going to see a lot of uh, um, uh, production going going to platforms. And at the same time, we will keep producing indie productions for theaters. Main problem is that we really need insurances because at the end, we in the producers are the one really facing the risks. We are the ones having, you know, because Netflix and HBO, they have money and enough money to, to face any problem with the COVID, but we need insurances. So that's, that's what, what I can say. No, and uh, is there another silver lining where we've noticed, for example, in Miami, that a lot of, there's a big influx of people from LA and people from New York. Um, is, there, is there a silver lining too of maybe regional productions being even more important because um, there's in a place that is not as populated, let's say, and it's not as dangerous and they're already used to smaller crews to begin with. Like, do you see that happening or? Well, I mean, I live in Andalusia, Andalusia, it's close to Morocco. It's, oh. it's this, it, we, we, are li we live in the South of Spain, South of Europe. We have an amazing water. It's, it's like uh, Miami. It's like we, we have only, I, I would say, 40 days of rains in the whole year and sun everywhere, every day. So, yeah, we 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 are, we are seeing a lot of people coming to this to to the south. I hope that um, that's some that's something that will help us getting more and more productions because at the end it's important. Of course, I mean it's it's easier to produce now with this COVID thing in 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 exteriors than in in stage. It's easier, so that's something that can 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 help us. And a lot of people from post-production, and they don't, they, don't, they don't mind if they are working in the north, if they are working in the US, or they don't mind if they are working in the south. So there are many people who is moving to Andalusia. That's something that we are seeing. I don't know how much, how, how long it's going to last, but yeah, that's something that is happening. Interesting. So I'm going to open it to questions. Um, so Dylan is asking, hello, thank you for your time today. Just wanted to ask Welcome. what you see as the biggest challenge um, producing an independent film right now and the biggest challenge distributing set film. Great question. Um, well, the biggest challenge is that, well, the main problem that we face every day is that when you talk to executives, they just want formula. They just want the same. They want, they, they just, and I mean, I'm not producing formula. I, I, I just want to produce an original new thing. I want challenge. I want to produce a different thing that, than, than uh, my past productions. The biggest challenge, in my opinion, is to convince these executives that today, because, you know, we, the, the bad thing with platforms is that they are, you know they are really big and they 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 think they can apply the same methodology of production in la than in spain or in in germany and and that sometimes it's not it's not good um so the biggest challenge is to find still original ideas to be able to pitch 
uh, without being in a market and you know that markets are festivals are really important and not being able to go to can to berlin it's a it's a big problem for us mm-hmm. and and of course to finance without all these insurances that i'm uh, that we are we've been talking those would be in my opinion the biggest challenges um in terms of distribution i think we have i mean I don't distribute myself. I always put in the hands of sales agents and there's a lot of competition, but also a lot of uh, possibilities. So I think it, we are living better times than before. So I, I don't see a big challenge on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you mentioned, and that's a, re- uh, and you made a, and you're right. Uh, all of our insurance companies canceled that we had COVID insurance until our insurance uh, expired. And as soon as it was expired, there was no COVID insurance anymore. Yeah, it's really frustrating. But you mentioned something about um, the markets, and they might be coming back in person. Um, we were talking about Khan. Will it be in July? Or will they push it again till October? Um, um, you mentioned Berlin. Are these the two important markets for you that you work at? Uh, with yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, for me, it's like uh, every every year I go to Berlin. Every year I go to 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 Cannes. For Europe, they are really really important. I mean. I think that um, when you are in the producer, one of the most important thing is to divide and split the risks. So co-production is so important. It's so, so important. It's important to co-produce within your own country. It's important to co-produce with other countries. And that's what, and, and, and the biggest challenge now is that now because we are, we, we, we are going to face a, an economical crisis in the next few years. And all the countries are going to look into their own bellies. You know, they are going to look into their own, you know, in, into them. And, and they're going to they're gonna try to invest in their own productions, be major product, productions. So it's going to be very difficult to co-produce, being you a my, major producer, to co-produce with minor producers from... France, from Italy, from the States, from New Zealand, that's going to be a challenge. But we need to, we need to push. We need to to fight for that because it's so important. Not only in terms of dividing the risks, but also in terms of visibility. And for a programmer in Berlin, in Cannes, in Toronto, it's not only important the story, but also who is telling the story and how the story has been told. And if you approach them with a story that maybe it's a rom it's a romantic drama that maybe you've seen it many times but it's it has been told um with a new perspective or with a from from a very exotic country uh, that's something that they really value so i think this is it's very very important to start going again uh, to festivals to attending film festivals I, I mean it's a pity that i'm not attending Miami. I mean, being in Miami after this conversation, I mean, after this conversation, I'm going to go and uh, go to bed because it's very late here. <laughs> and being you. there, we yeah. would have just uh, beers and we would have been able to meet people. And maybe from those meetings, we could create something. Now we have to do it, to do it by email. Okay, it's a way, but we need to go physical again. Back again. Uh- before we might, um, I think that once once five o'clock hits, it's going to be like an ab- abrupt end. So I'm thanking you already. Unless if we get kicked out of the system, you're amazing. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, we will see each other again in person. It was amazing to work with you. But we do have two more questions. One is about where should you learn about cryptocurrency? They don't, the the person doesn't know enough. Um, but it's a really fascinating idea from them. So is there a blog or something, a newsletter that you subscribe to that, that teaches you about cryptocurrency that you would recommend? No, not really. I mean, I'm, 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 I, I, well, that, that, that's a very difficult question because, you know, <laughs> cryptocurrency, it's so new and, but, uh, I, I follow, I follow some people. I, I follow Max, Max Kaiser in, 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 in the internet. I mean, in Twitter, you can find a lot of info. And of course, I think it's very important to read the papers. I mean, if you just take a look at uh, 
uh, Satoshi and just read the, the, the main papers from Bitcoin and then you will understand much better how it works. But again, this is it's very important to be informed before investing in, in cryptocurrency. I mean, it's, it's, it can be it, it's a huge risk behind it. So it's I'm, I'm not a trader. I mean, I'm a, I'm a hodl. I just bought and I hodl. I'm not trading. I'm yeah. not uh, that kind of trader. OK. Um, thank you. And then uh, as someone starting out, like you, you just making uh, your first short film, where would you see the best places to exhibit the short uh, YouTube film festivals, program oh, secret I mean, short films, something else? I mean, YouTube can be, but never at the first and not, never at the beginning. Of course, film festivals, film festivals. Again, it's so important to target the, the, the proper film festival. And of course, try to do a list always try to target first A-list festivals, then B festivals, there's a lot, and then you can go to YouTube. But don't don't place it in YouTube at the beginning because it's a way that friends and people can watch it because then you are burning your, your short film in advance. So it's very important to go to, um, to those A-list festivals, read, read the regulations in advance. Some of those festivals don't... Uh, uh, um, done a set of um, uh, short films that have been uh, um, uh, screened in different film festivals before. So always go to a list festival before going to another one. Also, duration is very important. Some of them doesn't like short films that are so too long, too long. Um, and again, sales agents, there are short film sales agents are people who know programmers, they know what they're looking for, and they can help you out with all this thing, which is not easy. And again, this is just a mistake, prueba y error, it's like the proven error. It's like, just do it and you will commit mistakes and you will do it better the next time. It's, yeah, that's it's the only way. It's a good, uh, so uh, what's next for you in the future? And before we wrap up, what's uh, meaning? Let's finish on a positive note. What are we excited about as indie producers that, that work outside of the main system in, uh, but was still successful? What is it that? Uh, well, I mean, the best thing being in the, the, the best thing, the, the best thing of being in this is that you can really exploit your creativity. That's, that's the best thing. And I mean, I'm not going to become a millionaire by doing films. That's, that's I mean, out of the system. That's something I know, but, but I can make a living, a very good living. I mean, I, 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 I have enough. I, I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm telling so much stories and helping so many talented guys. I'm also working with a lot of first timers. This is something that I really like, like helping young people to tell their stories and, and I think indie producers, uh, we have we have a big, a huge responsibility in our in our hands to to help those people to tell their own stories, to tell our own stories. And again, I mean, it's 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 something that I like. I know I I will be always an indie producer. I'm I believe in 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 this. I I believe this is the way. And I don't know. I I, I just hope I will be keep uh, still producing when I'm 80 because I'm, I know I'm, I will never stop producing. It is something I, I love it and I will do it since I can.